Hey guys, Fearless Front coming back at you uh, from the new shop actually. Not exactly anything to write home about. As you can see it's far from done. I'd like to get some pegboard and stuff on the wall and I haven't run any electricity so everything I do runs on extension cords from upstairs. But I find myself just chomping at the bit wanting to get stuff done and today is the perfect day for that because I have the day off because it is extremely cold outside. So I figured why not get down in the basement and figure out what is wrong with the Murray. Boy what a summer it has been for this poor machine. This thing has been nothing but reliable for me. Every year, I've had this thing for about eight years now. And it's gone through, you know, many changes, many renovations. I've changed a lot of stuff. I've upgraded a lot of stuff. Um, but this year, it took its toll on it. As you guys probably remember, we had transmission issues. Oh. Locked up, yeah. And after drowning it the initial time, I've had nothing but issues with the motor. So I think I have something seriously blown on the inside. It still turns over um, and it sounds like it's working, but I think I've got a blown piston ring or something because the compression is absolute garbage. But today's goal is going to be remove the transaxle, dissect it and see what's going on. Um, I don't think my locker blew because as you can see, both wheels still turn. Shifter still shifts. It actually seemed to came out of it in the last few rides, but I have a feeling there's a tooth from a gear sitting down in the bottom of the oil sump of the transaxle. It's just gonna eventually bounce around in there and just create mass havoc. And it's gonna leave me stranded on a trail with a broken transmission. And I don't wanna deal with that. So we're gonna take it apart and see what exactly happened to it. So to get this thing out, I've pretty much got to remove the belt, disconnect the shift linkage, pull the wheels off, uh, disconnect the brakes linkage, and then unbolt the entire thing and it should just drop right out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We'll get it on the workbench and then we'll see what's going on. So the poor Murray has had its transmission removed. And right now, I got it kind of bench viced in there loosely so I can keep it tipped up to drain this disgusting, sorry excuse for oil. And you can see how nasty it is. It's grayish, which tells me somehow water got into this case. Whether or not that is the reason for failure, I do not know. But for those of you wondering, this is a Tecumseh Peerless MST-205. Some of you probably remember in one of my past videos, I had this uh, Peerless 820 that was given to me. And you can see it's still really gummy in the case. I soaked all of the parts in uh, a kerosene diesel mix. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to reuse this thing or not because some of the rust is pretty bad. Things got pitted really bad, that's why I stopped working on it. I'm gonna maybe hunt around, see if someone will give me a different 820. I'd really like to go 820, um, but it's not necessary. So I'm gonna leave this thing here for like an hour or two so it'll spill its guts here into the bucket. It's really cold, so the oil's really thick. It's gonna take a while. Probably gonna go find a bite to eat and then get right back to it. All right, well, it looks like she's pretty much finished spilling oil. Let's get this thing on the bench and take it apart. So I think we're ready to go. Uh, I pulled the brake assembly off, I pulled the spring out of the, the shifter detent ball and I got my pulley off and one thing I'll address right now is I usually do not recommend these aluminum pulleys. These cast aluminum pulleys are for fractional horsepower, basically meaning something less than a horsepower. I have been using this one because at the time when I did the, the swap out on the, the Murray, this was what I could find readily available in my area. So I just bought one and figured I'd replace it soon and I honestly actually forgot about it, um, but I kept an eye on it and I mean, as you can see, there's, there's no wear. I mean, as long as your belt is aligned perfectly, it should be okay. But again, I do not recommend these. Go with steel anytime you can. Well, let's get started. Let's start with the bolts in the bottom because it'll be easier to do right now. All right, so now we got all the bolts removed. We got to separate the two case halves. And a lot of times this can prove tricky because you'll use a, a, a silicone sealant in between the two halves when you put it together, sandwich them together, bolt them down, it basically becomes an adhesive. And a, uh, a lot of people will grab a screwdriver and then just start like jamming it in and trying to like pry the aluminum parts to, apart. And I mean, what you're doing is you're gouging these mating surfaces. It's not something you wanna do. Um, a lot of times they'll put in like a little tang where you can intentionally put a screwdriver in and pop it. These don't have that. They have little notches cut out on the bottom half on this very front edge. So usually what I do is I take a very thick putty knife. I mean, it's this is a heavy one. This thing is like an antique. Uh, I usually find a spot where it'll go in, in between. I think this side is probably the better sides. 
Yeah, so I'm kind of in there. And what I'll do is I'll lightly tap it with a hammer. I have to come in from the other side now. Man, oh man, she's locked down tight. Alright, so since this thing's been such a pain in the ass, I got these wooden shims. You can get these at like any hardware store. That one's broken. Um, when you use these to separate, just to put something in there so I can keep going with this putty knife. The other thing you don't want to do is drive this blade in really, really far because there are gears in here. So you don't want to start messing with that stuff either. Ooh, I think we got it. Yep, bingo. Now, let's see what exactly is going on in here. So here's my transmission all torn apart, and I gotta be honest with you guys, I've been rifling through this thing for about 45 minutes now, and for the life of me, I cannot find a chip tooth on anything. Everything looks almost perfect. My shift keys, I even checked those, those are all good. My locker. All of the gears are absolutely perfect. The only thing that I can find fault in is on this giant bull gear. Obviously these don't have bearings, they, they ride on a film of oil and they rely on uh, film strength of the oil to, uh, to keep them kind of from wearing. Uh, on the very edge, like if I run my finger across this edge, you can't see it in the video, I can't even see it with my naked eye, but right there, it's sharp. So like the metal has kind of started to mushroom out the side from wear, which makes sense, I mean, because I mean, this thing's probably spinning, I don't know, the, the tractor does 23, 24 miles an hour, which is way faster than the stock transmission's supposed to go, so obviously you're going to wear stuff out quicker. Over here in the transaxle case, you probably, again, cannot see it, but you see these lines, and this side actually isn't bad, but this side actually has, like, a groove in it. It's not super, super bad, but you can definitely catch it with your fingernail, which is, is not good. Um, the other thing I noticed is this oil which again, is probably not good enough lighting in here for you to pick up on this. There is metal shavings in it. And the only other really bad part I, that I can really find is on this top case half. So right there, that input bearing is roached. So at the very least I'll be replacing that. But check this out. This is something I wanted to kind of look at when I had this all apart. Not this bull gear, let's get that out of there. But this is the MST-205 drive gear, basically. This is where you would select your gear. I put the shift keys back in, but this collar slides up and down. It selects what gear you're going to be in. Basically, all these things are freewheeling until you select the one that you want, and then it locks it up. This is the 820, but this one has four shift keys, which is obviously a little stronger. And it's also, you can tell, it has a reverse chain as opposed to a reverse gear. I kind of compared and contrasted all the parts together. There's another chunk of the 820, and there's the MST on the back. You know, again, very, very similar. Um, they're actually so similar that I took a couple of the gears off of this shaft, the gear select gears, and I was able to replace them with 820 gears. They are exactly the same uh, internal diameter, which I found quite fascinating. Um, so you probably could swap 820 gears onto an MST if you wanted to. And again, there's the other side of the reverse chain, which I'm not a fan of. The other really big difference is on the 820s, if you see in there, maybe you don't, you kind of can. Those are needle bearings on the inside, whereas on the 205, it's just a bronze bushing. So obviously needle bearings are much better than bushings, especially for longevity and high speed applications. So in a sort of weird way, I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't find anything wrong with the transaxle uh, for multiple reasons. Number one, it makes this whole video very anticlimactic. I thought I was going to pull that thing apart and it was going to be super obvious what was going on and I searched for 45 minutes and I still haven't found anything. Basically now I'm going to take the whole thing, clean it, 
and put it all back together, put oil in it, um, but I cannot find anything wrong with it at all. Just some metal shavings and some worn out machine surfaces. It's, it's baffling. I can't figure it out. The other thing I found really interesting is how similar the 205 is to the 820. Obviously there's big differences. The amount of bearings in the 820 is, well, there are bearings in an 820 and there's not in the 205 besides the input shaft. And the fact that the axle shafts are one inch, the bull gears are a little heavy duty in the 820. But generally speaking, the other internal mechanisms, pretty much the same. It gives me a lot more respect for the 205 or the MST series transaxles. I gotta buy some parts, I gotta get some cleaning supplies, and I gotta put this thing back together. I don't have any of that stuff right now, so I guess we'll just cut the video off here. So I guess we'll do the motor next, and I'm assuming we will find something because there is definitely something wrong with that thing. It has almost no compression, so that's obviously not good. Um, but thanks for watching the video, you guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Why don't you tell me your worst transaxle failure story? I'd love to hear them. I always think they're hilarious. It always seems like that stuff happens at the worst time, and I thought I was going to fall victim to that very same thing, and somehow didn't. So... I don't know. Let's put it back together. Let's run it till it dies. See you guys next time.